You are looking live at UMPC Lemieux Sports Complex in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, where the New Jersey Bandits U19AA girls hockey team is getting set for its quarterfinal match with the Ancaster Avalanche at the Berg Girls Fest Tournament for Thanksgiving weekend. Hi everybody, it's Joe Rizzo here bringing the action live on Rizzo Vision and the Bandits are in not a precarious position, but not the one that they wanted to be in. There's eight teams in the tournament. They played three preliminary games in the first round. And based on your results there, you were determined as the first through fourth seed in your division. And as a result, the Bandits, who came up empty in three games, all in regulation time, ended up as the fourth seed in their division. They take on the Ancaster Avalanche, who won all three of their games in regulation and earned the first seed in their division. They are from the area around Hamilton, Ontario. Bandits with the road jerseys, as they've worn now for the third time in four games. Base black with gold helmets. There's dark pink, white, and silver accenting there. The Avalanche wearing a kit similar to that of the Colorado Avalanche with an Ancaster Avalanche logo across the front in a triangle and some slight variations. They have the dark blue helmets, burgundy on the shoulders down to the sides, dark blue numbers and names, dark blue pants, and all of their colors integrated on the socks. The Avalanche coming in here without a loss, the Bandits without a win, but it matters none. Whoever wins this gets on to the semifinals on Sunday morning, and we're underway at the Lemieux Sports Complex. This is where the Pittsburgh Penguins practice, named after their all-time great player and owner, Mario Lemieux. Kepler gets it at the point. Shot can't get all the way through traffic. Comes toward neutral ice and in. No icing there. Chasing it down was, looks like Holdsworth, or rather McGilvery. At the point, one side shot, kicked down by Lexi Riley, and the rebound shot goes over the top of the net. So the first big chance goes to the Avalanche and they come up empty. Lexi Riley in the pipes for this one. Harper Keenan played the early game. And for Ancaster, it's Olivia Stallman in the cage, guarding the cage to your YouTube right. We are using the, not the usual tripod here, so it's a little bit smoother, but it, sometimes I get a little bit behind the play. Here's. Mandy Scott battling for it. You might lose just a little bit of picture right below us as Scott sends it in. It goes around the end boards there. Picked up by Houston had it. Kept in by Scott. Picked up by Izzy Camarada. Gets in. Fan Didn't really fan on the shot, but the puck wouldn't stay on the stick blade the way Izzy wanted it to. The Camaradas, the grandparents, not watching at the moment as there is going to be an icing because they are in the house. So we got a chance to meet them in person. Big supporters of Rizzo Vision and always nice to see. Matt Claus producing. He helps get that score bug to the top left of your screen. Debbie Rizzo at ice level with replays that you might not see. You won't see them integrated just yet into the live stream, but in the post-production, if you're seeing replays of goals or big plays, that's probably Debbie Rizzo. Avalanche try to break out. They get into the offensive zone now. Allen with it, tries to send it around the end boards. Ping pong back and forth. This is gonna be Folia who sends it up and out. 
that puck might die, and they do wave off the icing as Foley has sent it right along the boards in front of the two benches. Even early in the game, it got snowed up. Foley, a hand pass to herself. Murphy negotiates it out of the zone. Olivia Rodia stayed with the play to pick it up. McSherry on the pressure, Sperling on the left wing there. Jesse will talk about the heater that she's on in just a moment. Number 53 with the black jersey and the gold helmet. Getting down low and getting one shot on Riley was Grace Taylor, but Riley was able to turn it away and Taylor got bumped as she released it. Sort of like a quarterback at the moment just before releasing the football. It changed the trajectory of the puck. 12 minutes left first period. No score. This is an elimination game. The semifinals between the quarterfinals rather between the Bandits and the Ancaster Avalanche, number four seed against number one seed. Camarada is going to try to turn the corner here. Can she get by? She can't. Houston tied her up there. Maybe got away with the hook, but she had the stick underneath Camarada's stick, and usually they're going to let you get away with that as long as you don't bring it up too far. Looking for Camarada across ice. They don't get it. Ettero now had it for a moment. Eterno, sorry. And Gabby Rothstein picks it up. Gains the offensive zone, looks for some room, has Camerata trailing. Camerata picks it out of the skates of Volpini. It goes around the end line for Mandy Scott. Scott reverses it, but doesn't get it all the way through. And the Avalanche are going to try to break it out. Olivia Richard tips it to herself, and it's a two-on-one with Volpatti. Shoemaker, Grohl, McBath. There's going to be a shot and a goal. So that play originates all the way back in the bandit zone where Olivia Richard, at the breakout point, was looking like she was gonna send the puck toward the middle for another skater to pick it up. Instead, chipped it off the boards to herself, regained it, and then the two on one, Shoemaker Gromick played the pass, left the shooter to Lexi Riley, but the shooter is a sniper, and she found the top left corner of the net. Otterbein now with Rizzo and McNulty trying to even the score. Rizzo knocked that one down, tries to negotiate it out, does it with the body. Avalanche shot blocked away. Olivia Allen's offering. It comes to neutral ice where the Avalanche pick it up. McNulty tries to force the turnover. Otterbein, Rizzo between them. One of them got a piece. Set up for Rizzo on the change. There's a two on one. Rizzo tries to send it through to McNulty, but didn't quite get it over there. One of the Avalanche players was changing and got in there just enough. Kepler takes a shot that looked innocent, and Stallman, Olivia Stallman, kicked it out. And Rizzo nearly had a juicy rebound there as the Avalanche maybe were caught a little bit unawares. Bandits will seek a change and get it. Gabby Rothstein now out there with Bella Bellin and Annalise Gloss. There's a penalty on the Bandits, and we'll see what the official call is, but it looks like a roughing. And the first power play of the game will go to the Ancaster Avalanche, who have a one nothing lead with 9.25 left in period one. Olivia Rothstein goes in for the roughing. And the five on four is a minute 30 because of the 15 minute periods. That puck sent goes wide of the net by Kozumpel. Regained now in the corner. Kepler on D with Katie McCaffrey. Mia McSherry and Julia Fulgia up front. That one's sent in. It will be an icing if the puck keeps going and it does clear the line. It was slowing down. So we've seen some very fast ice. The ice in the earlier game today at Robert Morris University was extremely fast. This one on the Pe Pittsburgh Penguin practice rink. This is the alternate rink. The main practice rink is where we played the first game on Black Friday. Uh, the ice here, not as fast, but probably what you call a little bit more true. Plays true, if that means anything. It sort of, when you expect the puck to go a certain spot, it goes there, and the ice doesn't really affect it one way or another. 
Avalanche on the power play, and this is going to be a four on two as they break in, or at least a three on two. Shot goes well wide, and McSherry is going to pick it up, send it off of one of the Avalanche players, Taylor, and fires it out of the zone for Holdsworth to pick it up. Addison Holdsworth sends it in, but Katie McCaffrey sends it right back out. This one will not be an icing because it will slow down. The ref waved it off. It would have been very close, but the player slowed down as well. Had she not hit the brakes a little bit, it would have been a good opportunity for her to catch up. 8-10 left first period. Bandits down 1-0 to the Ancaster Avalanche. It's a quarterfinal playoff game in the Bird Girls Fest. Scott jumps on, got a piece. The goal scorer has it on the outside for a moment, but Gabby Rothstein picked it off of Olivia Richards' stick and gains the line on the offensive zone. Chips it off the boards, hoping to recover to himself. Gets slew footed right there. Oh, a textbook slew foot, and they just swallow the whistle on it. Bandit should have a power play. Mandy Scott gets checked, and they won't call anything. Oh boy, the Bandits with a couple of awful breaks on officiating to start with. It could have been easily, should have been two penalties, and the refs just choose not to call it. The slew foot is the worst one. Gabby Rothstein fires her. The slew foot's the worst one because it's an extremely dangerous play. You're behind a skater and you kick out one of their foot. You kick it forward and they lose balance. It's a, it's a concussion driving play and that's why it's almost always called by a ref that sees it. It's a very severe penalty in the NHL. If you do it, you'll probably get a match penalty. And if they don't catch it the first time, you'll get suspended. Ask P.K. Subban. He was a guilty performer of that move and often paid the price for it, even if it didn't happen in a game. Rizzo picks one off. Rizzo gets down. Rizzo gets down low, looking for a backhand, gets wheeled it off there, but still with it. Gets it at the dot, shot popped up. Camarada will try to knock it down. Camarada still out there at the end of the shift. Otterbein and Rizzo together. Usually McNulty waiting to come out to relieve Camarada. Kept in by Olivia Rothstein. Camarada's got to stay in. Otterbein picks it up. Otterbein down the middle. Shot exceeds the height of the crossbar. Camarada's there. Rizzo was there too. Had that shot maybe hit a crossbar or was a save with a rebound. Avalanche breakout. Come through the middle. Camarada heads right to the bench. She's going to complete the change as McNulty jumps on. Puck goes into the netting over the high glass and the whistle stops play with six minutes even left in the first period. Let's see if that line does stay out there. It does. Otterbein was maybe getting ready to come off, but McNulty just got on. That would have been about a one second shift for McNulty. So they let this line take the draw. Houston tried to keep it in. Houston rather. Goes all the way back to Sharma, Charman. Rizzo got a piece of that outlet pass, but they're able to break it through. Not cleanly though, as McCaffrey picks it up. McNulty left it for Rizzo. Oh, Rizzo got her pocket picked right there. That was a really neat play by McGilvery, who still has it. Mc McCaffrey trying to get it away from her. And eventually picked off now by Richard. Gets toward the circle. She has the first goal of the game. And it's 1-0 still. Comes out, no icing. Rizzo at the way end of her shift is gonna try to chase this one down. Oh boy, the early. If she had cut the, to the right side, she would have had Holdsworth just hand her the puck. There's a fall at the boards by Folia. There's a, there's a pick play and a check. Riley is gonna grab that one and hold on. Boy, the Avalanche have gotten away with three penalties. Blatant right there so far. The third of which was right there. Double pick play. Clear interference, but you can't worry about the, what the refs are gonna call or, gonna, or not call. You just have to play it. In the first game, the early breaks went the way of the North York Storm and eventually it evened out. The Bandits ended up with more power plays in the game, but sometimes if those breaks happen a little bit too early, the game gets a little bit out of hand and your best chances might be missed. Sperling chips it forward. 
Gets it out of the zone, but it's neutral zone play here. Folia got a piece. We'll talk about Jesse in a moment. Probably need a little stoppage of play to talk about the exploits of number 53. Holdsworth picks that one off. One on four, tries to get down the pipe. Couldn't get through Shoemaker Gromick. Eterno picked it up, ran, ran into Kepler. That's a good no call. The Kepler just stood her ground, which she's allowed to do, and Eterno ran into her. And Kepler, the stronger skater, just didn't budge, didn't move. Loose puck there, picked up by Sperling, who sends it in, and it goes around the end boards to the near side. Chipped off, Sperling hoping to pick that one off. Rothstein gets, rather, Gabby Rothstein gets onside, heads to the bench. Olivia, coming off the bench, is there. Gabby didn't head to the bench, I don't think. She headed down the middle. There's Olivia with it. Over to Mandy Scott. They'll break in two on two. Scott's shot gets knocked down. Camarada was hoping it would have sat down for her. Camarada looking to maybe go to the point. Makes a spin move, still with it at the outside of the circle. Sends it toward the middle. It's blocked by Allen, who picks it up and takes it behind her own net with three minutes left in period number one. The Bandits trail the Ancaster Avalanche, one nothing. Ancaster undefeated in the prelims. The Bandits winless, it means nothing. It only matters the result of this game. It's a quarterfinal match in the Berg Girls Fest. The logo is pretty cool. It's like a turkey versus a penguin. You could call it the Berg Girls Fest or the Berg, Berg, Bird Girls Fest if they wanted to. There's in front and a goal. Jordan McGilvery was in the corner and saw one of her teammates. I think it might have been Grace Taylor was the one to get it. Taylor came down the right side of the slot, caught the pass and fired it above Lexi Riley. 2-0 with 2.30 left in the first. And it's got to try to find some offense now. Puck pops up, just out of play, and they'll face it off at the center circle, or no, they will not. They will face it off here. Referee needs a new puck because the other one went out of play. They go over the scorer's table to get that. Otterbein wins the faceoff. Taylor picked it off, smacked forward. That's going to be an offside once it comes in, and that's exactly the case. Player's not immediately reacting to the whistle there. Avalanche will change. They are the benefactor of being the home team as the higher seed. So they wear the white jerseys and the bandits wear the black. And although they didn't have two teams changing there. They are calling a high stick over here now. Let's see who it is on. Nobody making their way to the penalty box as of yet. Maybe they're just saying it was knocked down with a high stick or was it a penalty? Otterbein is going to be whistled for the high stick. 2.09 left first period. Bandits trailing 2 0 and they're shorthanded once again. They haven't had any power plays, although they could very well successfully argue they should have had three at this point, but they have none, and that's what you have to play. So now you're down 2 0 to a good team, and all you could do is kill off the next minute and a half. Well, minute 10. Smacked out of the zone by Folia. Picked up by Holdsworth. Now sent out of the zone, it's gonna be an icing. And the Bandits will regroup in their own end with the defensive zone draw. Folia and McSherry will leave. Gabby Rothstein and Mandy Scott will jump on. Katie McCaffrey and Olivia Rothstein on defense. 
Stallman and Stroud at the points for the Avalanche, waiting for that puck to come there. Stallman tried to kick that one down. Scott's going to try to outrace Stroud. It will not be an icing. That puck died right at the line. So good hustle by Mandy Scott. Forcing the Avalanche player to go all out. Allen with it now, gains the, the zone. Looking to go to Stallman at the point. Ava Stallman with it, looking, looking. Plays catch now at the half boards. They play catch again. They're looking to get it down low. They do, knocked away by Olivia Rothstein. Comes to Stroud at the other point. Through traffic, it doesn't get all the way through. Leah Murphy might have kicked it away herself. 86 in front playing in the bottom of the slot there. They work the puck around. Lucarelli, now to Murphy. Murphy looking to go cross ice with it. Plays handoff with Stroud. Bandits have killed it off. Now 32 seconds left. Sperling jumps on for Otterbein. Shot goes all the way through to the near side wall. 24 seconds left in the period. Scott's going to try to outrace two. She doesn't have the angle on Stroud, who comes in and picks it off with 15 seconds left in the period. Avalanche get it out of the zone. Kepler sends it towards the back inside, but Taylor picks it up, centers it, gets down the middle. Shot! Oh, Riley with a big save there to keep it 2 0. Lexi got the inside of the right pad on it just, just in the nick of time. And we end period one with the bandage trailing. 2-0 to the Ancaster Avalanche. Shots on goal not up on the board, but once Kevin Camarada swims by, he'll probably provide us with that stat. So I have it as Richard and Taylor with the goals in the first for Ancaster. So the Bandits find themselves down 2-0. Now we'll talk a little bit about Jesse Sperling's heater. What's a heater? That's, that's a hot streak. But it's not just a hot streak, it's when you're just completely on fire. On the first game, Black Friday, Luisa Rizzo scored the first goal of the tournament for the Bandits. And in a four, then in the evening game, Jesse scored all three in a 6-3 Bandits loss to the Piedmont Predators, so that made it four in a row. And earlier today, in a 2-1 loss to the North York Storm, it was Jesse Sperling with the lone Bandits goal. Seven won the shots for Ancaster through one. But Bandits, we say it all the time, especially against good teams, they don't need a lot of chances. They have shown that they can make good on minimal amounts of chances. Lexi Riley now protects the cage to your YouTube right. And on the left, it is Olivia Stallman for the Ancaster Avalanche. Underway period two, Bandits trying to solve. A two nothing lead, seven won the shots for Ancaster in the first period. And that will need to change as McGilvery comes in, tries to center it. we are going to call a penalty here, and it's another one on the Bandits. They are going to call interference. So it's been a one-way show all the way so far, and Mia McSherry gets put into the box, or is it somebody else? It is McSherry. McSherry looking for an explanation over there. It didn't seem like anything was, was happening from my vantage point, which admittedly might be biased at times, but I try to call it even. And uh, even our Bandits family, as McGilvery takes the face off and fires it over the crossbar, even our Van Bandits family, as they were walking in, walking by the Rizzo Vision setup, said, call it even, call it even. So we like to call it even, and so far it's been really uneven. So the Bandits have to weather the storm here and wait for those breaks to start going the other way and see if they can find a way back into this. They've been in the deep waters 
even recently, as this puck will go down, will it go on net? It will, so Stallman has to play it. Camarada on the forecheck along with Folia. As McGilvery comes down low, centers it. One timer was knocked away. Richard was looking to put it in. Shoemaker, Gromick, Endor, Kepler got a piece. Neutral ice. It avoided the stick of Kaylee Drong at the point. We try to bring it in. It does come in. Camarada tries to push Holdsworth below the end line. Holdsworth tries to center it. Riley will cover it. And the whistle stops play with 17 seconds left in the seemingly endless turn of Ancaster Avalanche power plays. And so far they've been without sin, at least according to the only people who matter, the men in the stripes. A couple of men today. I think we had a couple of female refs so far. Off the faceoff, Stroud will take it and fire it. Riley made a blocker save. Avalanche spread out. Scott says it, clock not moving. So the Avalanche, as if things couldn't go any better for them, just got about 10 extra seconds of power play time. Richard now takes it over the end line. Olivia Rothstein, Foldia, uh, McSherry jumps out of the penalty box. So none the worse for wear, they're able to kill it off kill off the extra penalty time. It was, about, it was about eight extra seconds it looked like. Couple of collisions right there. Two bandits actually looked like they collided first with one another and then Eterno took a spill with it as well for the Avalanche drawing ire from their bench. But they really have nothing to complain about so far. I think if I was on their bench I'd probably be keeping my mouth shut and hope the brakes keep going my way. Allen along the end boards. They're looking to cycle it and send somebody in front. Got it onto the wrong side of the lefty stick there. Lucarelli below the end line for Murphy. They are not on a power play, but they look like they are. Centered toward the middle, Lucarelli tries to get it through Scott, can't do it. Sent below the end line now. Gabby Rothstein picks it up. Tries to move it through, but Allen takes it away. Gabby negotiating through traffic, and she will get a little open ice here, finally. And it's looking for just their third shot on goal. One of them came from center ice on a clearing attempt. Rizzo jumps in, Venuto mishandled it at the point there. Fernanda back to D for this one. Otterbein picks it up, was looking for Rizzo once. Now gets it toward McNulty. Rizzo and McNulty pirouette around each other. McNulty dumps it deep. Coming out the other side, Rizzo waiting for Stroud. McNulty was behind her. Stroud stopped, reversed it, got it forward. Otterbein tried to poke, poke it forward, does. Murphy couldn't reach it before Venuto. Stallman to Stroud. Rizzo putting her under pressure, but they do get it out. Not with a completed pass, though. Venuto gets through one. Venuto looking to send uh, McNulty on the far side. No icing there. Comes toward the point, kept in by McCaffrey, sends it at the net. I would say that's probably shot number three. Kevin Camarado will have the official count. But the Bandits draw the offensive zone faceoff with 11.03 left in period two. They're trailing 2 nothing. They've had absolutely no breaks in this game. They've given up, I think, three power plays. It might even be four. And they haven't had one. But you got to overcome it and then hope the brakes start going your way. Rope a dope, stay close, get one, and then see what happens. They have the wherewithal and the firepower to do it against any team in their level, and this is one of the best. McCaffrey at the point will tee it up, shot, kicked away. Big juicy rebound by Olivia Stallman. She didn't want that one to go there. And no bandit was able to pounce on it, and it went out of the zone. Bellin tries to shift it forward for Folia. Comes to Venuto. Venuto sends it forward for Bellin. Bellin's going to gain the line of center. Bellin will dump it into the near side corner. Comes around the other side. Bellin trying to outrace Houston for it. 46 against 46. The one in white was able to get there first. 
So he's about 10 feet ahead of the play. Claus got a piece of the outlet pass. Venuto whiffed on it. Otterbein got to it. Otterbein trying to get through traffic. Centers it for Claus or Bellin. Shoveled forward by Claus. Otterbein trying to battle there. Now Bellin's in front, hoping that a puck can get through to there. Oh, Claus nearly had the pickoff. And Richard was able to get it out of the zone. Sent up the middle for Otterbein. Oh, Sperling was just about behind the D. And no icing. Not sure why there was no icing there. Thought it was probably going to be an icing call. Avalanche send it up. Venuto picks it off as it hits Richard's skate. It comes toward Otterbein's area and Sperling. McSherry is going to jump down and see if she could get it. Takes a whack from Holsworth. Sent for Shoemaker Gromick between the points. Gets it down through traffic. Tapped forward and is saved by Stallman and she covers up. That puck was redirected. It took some of the momentum off. But Richard was able to make the save and then cover it up. Otterbein on the dot. McSherry in the slot. Sperling on the left wing. Sperling off the faceoff. Sends it back toward the middle. Otterbein picked it off for a moment. It goes to the far side. Wall! Kepler keeps it in. Great play by Kepler. And there's a player down. The Avalanche are yelling, but that is simply not a penalty. She just went for the puck, and she's a bigger, stronger player. It's not Kepler's fault that the other player is trying to stay in there and battle. She has the right to be and do where she was. In fact, she was first to the puck, so the other player coming in is really the one who's responsible for holding herself up. So, a good non-call. Shot goes just wide by Kepler. Otterbein battles along with Sperling in the near side corner. Pops out, Sperling trying to recover it. Otterbein lets Shoemaker Gromick get it and send it down low. Stroud picks it up. And Stroud looking to chip it off the boards on the far side. McGilvery got it off the boards. And the avalanche will break out. Murphy got it. Held up there. Otterbein tries to get through one. Sperling is the one to pick it up. Jesse gets down low. Backhand shot, save, and cover with 8.50 in left in period number two. The Bandits have picked it up. They had one shot in the second period, and I think they have probably about four so far right now. Scott and Olivia Rothstein on the draw. It comes out of the zone. Taylor fell down. There was nobody near her. Camarada up the right wing. Will tee it up. Shot. Save. No rebound. Camarada got the shot up. Went just above the crest of the Ancaster Avalanche logo on the chest of Olivia Stallman, and she threw the catching glove over it to make sure there was no rebound. Off the draw, Camarada to Olivia Rothstein, kept in at the line. Taylor was trying to get the breakaway. Olivia's shot hit her twin in the back. Mandy Scott at the point, seeing eye single through traffic. Kicked away by Stallman. Now comes to Taylor, picked off by Camarada. Camarada between the points, makes a big accurate pass. Shot by Redman along the ice, gloved down by Stallman. Offensive zone draw, Otterbein on the dot, Rizzo in the slot, McNulty on the right wing. Loose puck goes to the Avalanche. They'll try to move it out. And knocked away by Olivia Rothstein. That puck live, Rizzo trying to pick it off. Couldn't quite get there. Eterno sends it in. And Redman got there first, but it's picked up. McNulty has it. McNulty will break two on three with Rizzo. Two on four. McNulty gains the offensive zone line. Still with it, still with it. Got it tipped away. Otterbein tried to keep it in. That one's not going to be icing. Somebody got a piece of it. They immediately said no. She flew right by, eternal. 
picked off, kept in as they dump it. And change, Redmond with it. Redmond reverses, looking for somewhere to go with it. High off the boards, got it to Drong. Rizzo bodying off Drong. Drong now got the foot on it. Murphy's gonna tee it up, send it wide. Actually, Riley made it go a little extra wide. It comes to the point, Holdsworth took it out and sent it right back in for the offside. Bandits have really picked it up here in the second. And it's been helped by the fact that the conga line to the bandit penalty box has ceased. Now they could probably use a power play or two of their own to even it out, but it hasn't happened yet. The, the would-be infractions as Riley makes that save, the would-be infractions on the avalanche, they were about three in a five minute period during the first, and none of which were deemed a penalty. But for the two nothing deficit, you gotta, you gotta get that first one. Murphy wanted to come toward the net, but will take it all the way around. Folia interrupted her progress, sent in the slot. Drong is gonna get it off the point. Murphy will cover the point for her. Taken along the end boards. Can't get it around. Chipped off the boards on the far side. McCaffrey will get a little hook there, get it towards center, send it down, but just before the center line, they call the icing. 5.36 left, period two. Bandits trail, two nothing. This is a playoff game. It's the quarterfinals of the Berg Girls Fest. In Lemieux Sports Complex, yes, as in Mario Lemieux, the owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins the legendary NHL player. This is where the Penguins practice and have their offices as well. Scott lifts a stick. Camarada trying to break out. Chips one forward. Stroud holding her ground. Run into the boards there. Stroud was running into the boards. They're asking for a penalty, and now it's blown dead. And Camarada, Camarada had the angle. The other player was just the other player was forward, just never hit the brakes. Camarada was in front. She's down on the ice and the Avalanche parents not none too pleased with what happened there. The player still down. The player. Player still down. I'm not sure who it is. 5:20 left. Period two. Bandits trail two nothing. It was just a play where two players were heading toward the boards. There, Camarada had the angle, and neither player was hitting the brakes. Camarada was in front. The other player tried to squeeze through her and. They both rode into the boards hard. Referees did not call a penalty. It didn't look from this vantage point like it was any kind of a cheap shot, but these players are playing hard. They're not used to slowing down. And there's a very angry mother. It's Stroud. The player Brianne Stroud under the aid of Ava Stallman and another teammate gets back to the bench and take a seat over there. After the injury delay, Avalanche coach now speaking with the referees in in real time, 
I mean, you could go back and try to go to the replays, but in real time, Camarada had the angle. Stroud was trying to get outside. Camarada got to the puck first. I couldn't tell if Stroud lost an edge as she hit the boards, but as she hit it, she hit it inside of where, where Camarada was. So it was a big boom. And an injured player. Taylor now just gets away completely with a cross check on McCaffrey, and the Avalanche parents don't seem to care about that. So as a parent, who has a player on the ice, I can completely understand the emotion of seeing your child laid out on the ice. It is all of our worst nightmares. And that's, that, that acceptance is essentially why that parent is still allowed in the rink at this point, because the, by rule, behavior was in any game that I've been at is the parent would be ejected, but because the player is injured, there's some level of understanding, I suppose, and hopefully the cooler heads do prevail here. 436 left period number two, two nothing, Ancaster Avalanche. They hail from the Hamilton, Ontario area, about a four hour drive from where we are in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, outside of Pittsburgh. Bandits trying to cut down a 2-0 lead. Knocked down not with a high stick. Well, it wouldn't have mattered because the Bandits were the next to play it. Chipped out of the zone. Here comes McSherry dumping it in. Coming out the other side is Drong. Comes toward the point and sent out. It was tipped. Puck rolling on its end, so it slows down for Kepler. Didn't have to go all the way down. McSherry gets the skates kicked out over there at the boards. And that's two that they've gotten away with, if you're counting. Richard has the first goal and has the puck now. Takes it around the end boards. Gets it tied up in the skates. McSherry intercepted a pass. Chipped it up the boards a little bit too hard. Foley went in to try to block the shooting lane. Avalanche still with it along the end boards. Coming down the middle. Shot. Save Riley and she covers up. Bandits will change it up with 3.37 left in period two. Otterbein on the dot, Rizzo and McNulty will be the wings in the slot. Shoemaker, Gromick, and Kepler, the pair on defense. Loose battle for the puck, Otterbein shipped it out, got it out of the zone, brought in offside. They'll face it off just outside the zone now. Otterbein was looking to shovel it a little bit more forward for Rizzo. See if 58 has a goal in that stick to get the bandits on the board. Maybe it's number four, McNulty. Allen sends it down low, but Shoemaker Gromick knocked it away. Rizzo picks it up. Stroud didn't even miss a shift. That is absolutely what you want to see. So Brianne Stroud, the one who was shaken up, has not even missed a shift. The best news, Rizzo had it at center, was trying to tip it to see if she could get around Stroud. Otterbein picks up a loose puck at center and will skate it into the zone, get it into the slot, lost it just a little bit, gets ridden into the boards there, comes to the point, it gets past Kepler, Shoemaker Gromick will hustle down to get it, no icing as the puck dies with 2.35 left in the second period. The Bandits have settled down this game. Murphy shot was blocked by Kepler. Morgan didn't even, got a little help on. No call. Shot blunted down and pops to give as Taylor was trying to redirect it in front and Lexi Riley holds on. Under two minutes now left in period two. The Bandits are well in this one on paper a team that went 3-0 and oh in the preliminaries against a team that went 0-3. Oh and three. Looked like it would be, especially with a quick 2-0 lead, quick 1-0 lead, and then they made it 2 later in the first period. You thought maybe 
this one would possibly get lopsided, but the bandits have fought their way back in and probably been the right there. Now the avalanche after that non-call, they're just gonna they're just taking liberties all over the ice and getting away with everything. And you can't fault them if you, if the refs aren't gonna call it, just keep doing it until somebody gets called there. Camarada one on two, one on three. Let's see, knocked it out. Here's a possible break by Taylor. Taylor has it. By Riley, she robbed McGilvery and covers up. The bandits are refusing to die. They're not getting any breaks, but they are hanging in there against the potent Ancaster Avalanche. Big save, and that was a well-designed play. Jordan McGilvery, I think it was she, could have been Francesca Turner. It looked like 22, just 22. She was there and she made a good shot and Riley came up big to keep it within two. Another trip there by Eterno, gets away with it. They're just getting away with them all over the place. McCaffrey, there's a shot and a score. Olivia Richard got through McCaffrey. And she roofed it for a 3-0 lead with 19.4 seconds left in the second period. It might now expire things. So after two, it's 3-0 and Caster Avalanche. Annalise Claus is going to get a little fine in the kangaroo court for falling after jumping over the bench. She probably could have flipped over the bench and done a handspring. Now we're super gymnast, number 20. Shots on goal for period two. Eight, seven bandits for game totals of 14-9 for the Avalanche. So after being outshot 7-1 in period one, they recover to outshoot Ancaster, but none past Olivia Stallman and one very late one and a big one by Olivia Richard. Did have a big delay with 5.20 left in the second when Brianne Stroud and Izzy Camarada were battling for a puck along the boards on the left side. Stroud took a big hit. There was a lot of drama from a very upset parent. Who just about set foot on the ice and was quickly admonished by the referees to not do that and by her home bench. Still was not ejected from the arena because let's face it, when your kid is laying on the ice, there should be a little leeway for a parent being upset. A litany of four letter words for the officials, but they held their cool. Betsy Riley defends the goal to your YouTube left. Olivia Stallman to your YouTube right. Underway, period three. If the Bandits don't find three, this will be the end of the Bird Girls Fest for them. But we will not count them out until that final whistle. They picked it up in the second period. Gabby Rothstein's shot blocked away and goes over the net. Centering feed, Scott was looking for Gabby and didn't quite get there. Lucarelli gets it in, knocked away, picked up by Shoemaker Gromick, who finds Camarada. Camarada will gain the line, fire it at the net, bounds off the other side, Shoemaker Gromick now pinching in. The Bandits are gonna have to start taking chances. Why the heck not? It's lose or go home. Take some chances, see if you can knock down a puck, get a break, get that first one. The Hall of Fame coach, Bill Parcells in football would say, get the zero off the board. That's your first order of business. And if you want to come back from three, you can't do it unless you get one. They have 13.53 to figure that out. Centering attempt, shot goes just wide.
Kepler sends it up the near side wall. Camerata trying to chip it out to get behind the defense. Kozenpel battling through. Bandits pick it up. Gabby Rothstein will send it down. They will call no icing because that puck dying on its end. Scott trying to get through. Very nice play by Annika Sharman to pick that puck up and make the turn. Scott's going to keep it in. Otterbein's down low. McNulty will give chase. Scott will jump off. Rizzo will jump on. There's Luisa jumping into the picture. Picks it. Oh, boy. Looked like she kept it in. But they call the offside. Rizzo would have streaked right through the middle. And they don't give him the benefit of the doubt. There's a few people to my right that might argue that the refs have not been very good to their team. But they've been much better to their team than they have to the Bandits so far. The Bandits really haven't gotten maybe more than one or two breaks. And the Avalanche have had more than Curious George can count fingers and toes on my favorite cartoon. There was a Penguins uh, official ice uh, well, tending to the ice, and he had a yellow shirt and a yellow hat on, so there was, a, there was Curious George on the mind for me. 12.30 left, period three. Bandits down three, nothing. They're in the dark jerseys. Shot knocked down. Looked like Olivia Rothstein punched it away with the left hand and she's shaking it. Sent out toward the middle. Rizzo was looking to get a break. Rizzo trying to press and got a piece of Kaylee Drong's offering. Eventually, they turned it over. McNulty trying to spring Otterbein. Murphy jumps forward. Tries to stay down to draw the infraction. Gets up. And it's trying to put the pressure on. Seeing if they could force a turnover. Ava Stallman sends it through the middle. Venuto picks it off. Venuto is going to try to take it to the house on her own. Sends it wide. Shot knocked away by Stallman. Olivia Stallman. Murphy up the wing on the far side, kept in by Folia. Loose puck, nobody knows where it is. It's in Murphy's skates. And Leah Murphy finally got it forward. Sperling gets that one picked by McGilvery, but Folia comes to pick it up. A little slow play now and neutralized. Folia tries to get through. Didn't get it with the puck, probably got away with one there kept the stick low and had the fists forward. Retreating into their own end. Fusen tried to move it forward for Taylor. Ping pong out. They say no icing, or they do say icing. I thought he was saying no, no. I was watching the puck to see if it would slow down and not looking at the referee. So a rookie mistake for the announcer. Ten forty-seven left. Period number three. Can the Bandits at least get the zero off the board and try to get it back to a two-goal deficit and work from there? They have the tools to do it. They didn't do themselves a favor in the first period, and they had really settled the game down in the second until nineteen point four seconds were left in the period, and just a great play by Olivia Richard made it a three nothing game. Kept in by McCaffrey, sends it toward Houston, was maybe looking to get it off of a skate. Venuto tried to keep it in at the point, couldn't do it, McCaffrey retreats. Katie will take it around her own net. Still with it, chips it forward for Bellin. Bellin got a piece, but there were two avalanche players there. Stood her ground. Comes out, Rothstein had a piece of it. Bellin was looking to get on the move with Claus. Those two, trying to see if they can be the ones to break out. Fresh legs, Claus trying to pick that one off. Pure wet, nice by Drong to keep it in. Bandits running into one another over there. Now coming down the middle, Venuto got a piece of the shot by, by Volpini. Julia Volpini there. It's Venuto Claus trying to spring forward. Holdsworth ran into her. 
Now Gabby Rothstein gets in, gets down low, takes a swipe, backhand shot, Bellin on the rebound, Bellin with the stuff attempt and it's kicked away. Bella Bellin nearly got him on the board and Gabby Rothstein too. It comes to Bellin, she tries to send it through the slot, was maybe looking for Venuto coming down. That one sent out it. Don't know if this will be an icing, it does go over the line. That puck got it on its end and was rolling. So a good energy shift there by Bellin and Claus with Gabby Rothstein. With Venuto moving back to D with this one, the Bandits have used three centers and four wing pairs for the most part. So we've seen a bunch of different combinations and it hasn't put anything on the scoreboard yet, but the combos have looked pretty good. Sometimes it, it might take a couple of periods of gel and maybe there's a three goal thing coming here. Oh, and Camarada almost got the first one. Redirected the pass from the half boards by Scott at the net and it was going five hole, but Olivia Stallman was able to slam the door. Got it with the bottom inside edge of the left pad. Off the face off, Avalanche win it. Take it around the end boards up the near side wall. And it's converged. Folia gets a piece, but didn't get it to go down into the zone. Camarada picks it up, tries to get through one. It bounces in favor of Scott. Scott was trying to throw it down to the far side corner. Didn't get it through all the, the avalanche of traffic in white shirts. Shoemaker Gromick tried to keep it in. Got caught up on the boards in front of the avalanche bench. A couple of avalanche folks on the bench throwing their hands up in the air. And maybe Shoemaker Gromick did get away with a little bit of a trip there. Folia didn't realize that she got as much of a piece of Stroud as she did, because Stroud had lost the puck there, and Folia kind of skated on by. Comes to the point, but sent out and quickly back in for the offside. Bandits have 744 to figure out how to solve a three-goal deficit. The first way is to get one. Otterbein with Rizzo and McNulty up front. Olivia Rothstein and Kira Redman on D. Off the draw, it's in McNulty skates, and Maeve turns and sends it down low. Charmin is going to pick it up and look for some room. Tipped up the middle. This will be an icing. Unless that puck dies, it's dying. And it does make it for the icing. Redmond, good thing she didn't take her foot off the gas, because that puck was dying on its end. Not on its end, but it was dying at the end, rather. So 7.29 remaining. Can the Bandits, if they could get that one, we just don't know what can happen. You gotta, you gotta change the course of the game here. Otterbein on the dot, McNulty in the slot, Rizzo on the far side wing. Comes through the middle and Taylor just jumps in the gap and steals it away. Redman got whacked in the head with the stick. Taylor swung the stick around and hit Redman in the head. But you don't hear anything from the other side about that. Shot goes over the crossbar. That was a big shot by Cosimpel. Didn't find the net. Comes through the middle. McNulty and Rizzo will break out two on two. Rizzo has it now, gonna get trailed, dumps it. And Otterbein's gonna see if she could snuff it out the other side or maybe McNulty. They were about to combine to force the turnover, but a good play there again by Annika Sharman to reverse it and now get it out. Eternal with it, sends it through the middle. Richard, who has two, the first and the last for the Avalanche, picked it up there, chipped for Rizzo, lost it for a moment in that snow by the benches, right by where the defense goes twice and the offense in the second period. 6.18 left now, the time not the friend of the bandits at the moment. But they are still trying. Rizzo hoping that shot was gonna get released because she was ready to block it and get off to the races. Good decision by Drong to not release it. Rizzo putting the pressure on, got a piece. Now Olivia Rothstein had it for a moment. Venuto with it. Rizzo's gonna peel off for the shift change. McNulty still out there, Spurling jumps on. 
with Otterbein. Otterbein gets it forward for Jesse, sent for McNulty on the far side. McNulty will dump and change. Sperling picks that one off, has McCaffrey at the point, banks it to her. Katie shot through traffic but didn't have the lane. There was a lot of traffic there, sent it wide. Folia battling for it. Bandits on their last life here. They gotta really take some chances if they wanna get back in it. Even here's Venuto, one on one, tees it up, shot off the skates of Holdsworth. Venuto will pursue still with it. McSherry got a piece, taking a chance. McCaffrey, you gotta do it at this point. Sperling hustling back, Venuto hustling back. One on one, knocked away by Folia. They're gonna call a penalty on that one. Oh boy, that's, I mean, what a time to call one. The Bandits with no power plays in the game. The flawless avalanche on the power play for the fourth or fifth time. Wow. Can't call it home cooking because neither team is from within four hours of here, but that's pretty tough to swallow. Especially when there was a lot of stuff going the other way. So in this game, it's not going to even out for the Bandits. Maybe it'll be, they'll have to wait till the next game, but in, when it's an elimination game, you really want it to even out within the game, but they just haven't gotten a single penalty, not a single Avalanche player in the box for the game. And, and it hasn't been one of those mellow games. You know, There's been some rough stuff going on there. Taylor tees one up, blocked by... Shoemaker Gromick. The Bandits are in dire straits here. They have one minute to kill off on a power play and they're trailing 3-0. It's gonna, it's gonna take something else. Boy, and if they could forge this one back into a tie, you're gonna bookmark this video for, from now until the end of time. And Sherry tripped up over the, the the two calls that were egregiously missed as Gabby Rothstein tries for the breakaway were the slew foots. And that's when you kick the skate out from, you're behind the player and you kick one of their skates out. It's very subtle, it's very difficult for a referee to see. And the Avalanche got away with one big one and another one more subtle. And you really want the refs to call those because they're dangerous plays. The players fall backwards and even with the helmets on, they can hit the back of their head on the ice. So when those don't get called, that's when you really start to hope that things will even out. But if you can get away with it, and you're a good team, it makes you impossible to beat, essentially, and that's where the Avalanche are now. 3.20 left, back to full and even strength. Can the Bandits find one? If they can get one, it might shorten the ride home on Sunday. They're playing hard, and after a tough first period, they really have rebounded to play a relatively even game. And even though they lost one nothing in the second period, they probably had a little bit better of the play. At least arguably even. Comes through the middle, Richard has two. Olivia Rothstein picks it up, sends it for Camarada, but it hits just off the back of the net. Camarada flips it up into the netting. In the NHL, that would be a delay of game, but in these rules, it's just a face-off. Referee opens the door, looking for the puck. But the other referee has one, or they'll go to the scorer's table to get one. And let's see, they will go to the uh, avalanche bench to get one. So the vulcanized rubber, not frozen so much at this point, so not quite as hard or galvanized in the moment. A little less pain for the goalies, maybe a little less velocity on the shots. Holdsworth hits Allen with a slapper. Friendly fire. Sent in offside. They should, let's see if they face that one off in the center circle. Holdsworth was behind the center line when she sent it forward, but these refs pretty much are calling the offside face-offs on the dots outside of the zone. Gabby Rothstein with Annalise Claus and Bella Bellin. This is probably their final 
chance of the tournament. Unless they can dent the net quickly. I don't know if the Bandits will pull Lexi Riley or not. Maybe if they get one, they'll pull her. But down three, maybe not so much. Bellin trying to force it out of the zone. Gabby Rothstein will help it there a little bit. Cosm Pell was there. Claus bodied off. Holdsworth with the headbutt there. And side to side. Redmond fanned on it. Cosm Pell just bumped her there. A lot of interference going on. They're not going to call that at this point, although they did call the trip. On a, I mean, of all the calls they could have made in the game, that was... One that I wouldn't, I would have bet against them calling it the last penalty. 120 left now for the Bandits, just to play in it for a miracle or for pride. Here's Bella Bellin gets a shot off. It goes just wide, blocked by Ava Stallman. Comes below the end line. Bellin gets a shoulder to the head for what it's worth. They're just not going to call a penalty no matter what on the team of white today. That's just the way it is sometimes, folks. It's youth hockey. Paterno now has it down low. One final shift here for Rizzo. Has three to beat, sends it in. We'll chase after Stroud. Stroud was the one shaken up before to a lot of dramatics and didn't miss a shift, thankfully. Canuto chips it up. Eterno got a piece. It sent it back in offside. 22 seconds left. We'll see if they just keep that group out here for the final time. Otterbein with Rizzo and McNulty. Maeve joined Eva and Luisa for the last two games in the wing. Mandy Scott was with them for the first two. Rizzo had the first goal of the tournament. Sperling got the next however many as Otterbein comes into the zone. And the clock runs out. So the Bandits will head home. Didn't go the way they wanted, but they'll gather around their goaltender, Lexi Riley. They played a scoreless third. It was two in the first, one in the second, none in the third. And Camarado will hustle over at some point with our final shot totals as the teams shake hands at center ice. It will be the semifinals for the Ancaster Avalanche and a little R&R &R at the hotel or thereabouts for the Bandits tonight. Maybe a little team building for the girls and a couple of adult beverages for the parents. And Probably an early wake-up call for a lot of us to get back home to our families. Some of us uh, separated from the family here for the Thanksgiving holiday. But nevertheless, with the hockey family at Thanksgiving 2023. Bandits heading off the ice. And they fall by the score of three to nothing. Let's see if I can get Kevin Camarada. For the final shot total. Kev. Kev. Kevin, shots. We're still on the air, folks. We're, st we're still on the air, folks. We're still on the air. We're still on the air, Kenny Sperling. Thank you, thank you Rizzo Vision. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we get the thank yous from Rizzo Vision. And uh, we are just waiting the final shot total. That's, we have to have that for the record. It's Kevin Camarada about to... 16-14 Avalanche, the final shot total. So that one, you could tell, was played close to the vest. Three go in for the Avalanche. They had 7-1 in the first period. So after that, the Bandits really were able to turn it around. They couldn't get 
that goal that they needed to really turn the tide, but they hustled and played hard and they can exit with their heads held high. From here on in until the end of the calendar year, I think it, it is all or mostly home games. So typically the home games, I don't think we are able to stream those for you, but you'll have to check out the on-demand versions of those games unless we can some, change something, which we will try to do. But uh, otherwise, the Bandits come away not with the tournament that they were looking for, but with the final game here against the top-seeded opponent in the entire tournament, perhaps. Uh, they made a very good accounting of themselves so they can leave with their heads held high and jump back into the AGHF season in the weekends to come ahead of the end of the year holidays and the December holiday season. So signing off for one final time from the Pittsburgh area. I'll give you a look at the Penguins logos over there. From the UMPC Lemieux Sports Complex, the home of the Pittsburgh Penguins for their training and practice facilities. This is Joe Rizzo. Thanks for watching. New Jersey Bandits girls hockey on Rizzo Vision.